Hello, everyone. I'm Halima Ahmed, a second year biomedical sciences student here at York University, and I'm excited to be a moderator for this session. I'm also a member of the Canadian Prime Minister's Youth Council. So I want to kind of just jump right into it because we're here for a quick 20 minutes. Um, so I want to introduce our panelists. Firstly, we have Zul Abdul Razak, who is the rector of the International Islamic University of Malaysia. He is the immediate past president of International Association of Universities, a Paris-based UNESCO affiliated organization, and the first Asian recipient of the 2017 Gilbert Medal. Next, we have Rebecca John, who is an international student from India, pursuing a specialized honors in cybersecurity from York University. And she has participated in the National Science Congress addressing issues around sustainability, and is currently a part of the Go Global SDGs in Action program. And lastly, we have Claudio, who is an international relations graduate, and he's in his final year of law school and his master's degree in development and society. And as part of his research, Claudio is an international visiting research trainee at Osgoode Hall Law School. So we have a really jam-packed and amazing panel here today. And I wanna start off with our students. During last year's conference, Jules shared his thoughts on sustainable development and higher education through the example of his institution. So I want to know, we could start off with Claudio, what were your thoughts on his remarks? Awesome. Uh, awesome. First of all, it's a great honor to be speaking at this conference. It's especially nice to be sharing the, the panel of, of this team with you, Halima, with Rebecca and Dr. Zhu. Uh, about uh, Dr. Zhu's uh, remarks, they were really good uh, and I enjoyed listening to it, especially uh, I think it's important to value the possibility we have now more than ever uh, to share good practices and even to be able to reproduce them. Uh, the initiatives that uh, his university is, is doing are really impressive and I, I really appreciate the way that they put it, uh, possibilities to really make sure that every single student is not left behind. So really focusing on, on uh, each student and each person, uh, regardless of their, their personal circumstances, everybody's being taken care of and I really like that. Uh, I also thought I'd share something very uh, special about my home university, as this is also a space for um, for best practice sharing, as Dr. Zhu did. And one of them is uh, a Center for Legal Practices, a pro bono clinic that integrates the law school at uh, University Alto Vale do Rio do Peixe in, in Brazil. It handles about 560 lawsuits and uh, involves the most diverse civil areas. In, in that way, the university is connecting to the community with access to justice, with goals, uh, with the SDG number 16, with peace promoted, promoting and also uh, in a way promoting peace by acting locally, but also thinking globally. Thank you, Claudio. I'd like to pass it to Rebecca. As someone who really believes uh, in holistic learning, a lot of aspects of last year's presentation really resonated with me. Basically, it came down to humanizing education. Um, the aspects of global relevance um, and community engagement, experimental learning, they connected with me at a level um, that I would just say as a student who has been doing projects on sustainability and around sustainability since 2015, I would have loved to actually see something like this um, in action. The fact that um, Zul also gave us the outcome that 300, at least 300 of his students were able to present their SDG proposals, that means a lot of the youth now have that perspective and that diversity when they are uh, going to get into um, doing more and more projects, they are going to get into their professional environments and they're going to be making decisions that are going to have global impacts and they'll have this, they'll have a perspective that takes everyone together. The fact of having a balanced graduate also, what really stuck out to me was the system of database that they have, where they're going to collect all um, of the things that students came up with. They're going to um, they're going to record that in their database because we'll be able to see the revolution of sustainability, the definitions about it um, in real time through such a system. It was very inspiring as a student during COVID. We actually saw in my country 
what youth can do as all of them band together to feed uh, migrant workers, to be able uh, to distribute uh, clothing. They all band together through the help of technology and considering the fact that we have, um, Zul was able to introduce a framework of transformative education, wherein we can have these graduates um, be able to pursue their passions, their education, with having values and uh, being able to be engaged with the community, we can actually see the ever evolving innovation and development that as a youth, we can grow together and we will be able to see a holistic perspective moving forward in the sustainable um in the sustainable in a sustainable world that is all i was thinking about when i was going through the presentation when i was reflecting back at uh, the things that have happened in my country and as an international student here thank you so much lima yeah, and you know, both of you being students and also being really, really accomplished students, I'm curious to know, how does sustainable development goals kind of guide the work that you do, whether it's, you know, cybersecurity work for you, Rebecca, or all this law stuff for you, Claudio, how does sustainable development goals guide your volunteering, your education, how you kind of approach education um, at, as students? We could start off with Claudio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I, I was very fortunate to, to, to see it from two different perspectives. So first of all, in kind of like a, an institutional point of view, my home university doesn't require you um, or for any of the students to really like be involved with, with SDGs or volunteering, but they just make it extremely easy to do so. And when you have those opportunities to be a volunteer, to act on the SDGs, to be uh, trained <laughs> for it, in different community community initiatives and different volunteering projects um, that really just just sparkles you the opportunity to do so so in an institutional way it, it has really been helpful to have an institution that makes it easy for you to become uh, an, an advocate for SDGs in another point as a student uh, several different things really play a role right in the day-to-day -day life when you're uh, going about and seeing how uh, quality education plays a role and how you can improve your community uh, that has led me to different things uh, as you mentioned for example our volunteering work right so i've been able to integrate different groups in different communities and um, just thinking about that uh, I, I find that volunteer work has been a great way to develop skills uh, gain knowledge and uh, applying the the sdgs to that really is interesting as you see that uh, maybe the the small little thing that i do in the day-to-day -day life also uh, adds to the to the ocean of things that the SDGs uh, plan to accomplish. So it has really played a big role in my life, and I see it uh, as a way to start building up a work ethic that is concerned with improvement, uh, in, in improving the place where I live uh, in the most different senses of it. Just from from actually like improving the people's lives all the way to improving uh, my own livelihood. Yeah, and I really love that because ultimately that is kind of the idea of sustainable development, improving, you know, today's generation, today's society, but also creating, you know, pathways and solutions forward for future generations. And so I'd like to pass it out to Rebecca to hear more about how SDGs kind of guide your work, your education. I definitely resonate a lot with what Claudio has already mentioned, but um, I actually came across the term sustainability in 2015, and it was all by a coincidence um, through one of the science exhibitions that we were having. And throughout the years, um, working on projects, connecting with people, really gave me a perspective of why sustainability is important, as we saw, um, as we are seeing in news, as as to we have um, as to uh, the com the climate change from all of the raging raging problems that we have as of now, we really have such um, we really have so many resources as students in our hands. When I came to Canada, I am so glad that as a York student, I have so many uh, opportunities to be engaged uh, and continue my journey in sustainability. For example, me being here was also a it was also because of the initiative that um, York gave us as students to be able to share our perspective towards uh, sustainability. And as a student, I believe when we actually 
volunteer, when we actually uh, engage with our community towards the issues that are there in the root level with them, it leaves an impression onto us that we carry throughout our lives. That impression is what we'll carry um, as especially as someone in the technological field, which is expanding at an exponential rate. We talk a lot of uh, about um, evolving AI. We talk a lot about integrating um, artificial intelligence into different aspects of um, our lives, into hospitals, into education, into teaching. But what really comes down uh, is that AI has to be trained by humans. And as humans, we need a bias free, we need a holistic uh, perspective on things. So as developers, we would be able, uh, we would be able to develop that kind of understanding only when we are engaging um, readily with uh, the ever evolving concept of sustainability and our communities to have empathy moving forward. Because in technology, we can have a profound impact by whatever we are giving to the artificial intelligence because it's a reflection of us as a society. And we as youth, if we are balanced individuals, then we will be able to create systems that are um, rather bias-free, that, uh, that will be inclusive to all. And that is one of the goals with which um, I would like to see uh, higher education moving forward forward so that we have, apart from our focus on merit-based education, we'd also be able to integrate a system to teach um, the STEM, especially the STEM, industry, um, the STEM students, all of the other perspectives that really need to sink in before we are able uh, to integrate into society what would be uh, the future, which would be a lot of um, a lot of artificial intelligence, a lot of cy um, a lot of uh, cybersecurity related um, uh, database related issues, um, and all the ethics that surrounds these issues. It is really important for us as future developers, as uh, people who would be programming um, such uh, impacts, to be able to really understand and connect with communities so that we end up with our innovation and our development in such a way that it is inclusive to all, it is holistic for all, and it would be able uh, to grow alongside everyone by taking everyone together with us. That is what I wish the future education would focus on. Mm. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for your sharing your remarks and as well with free to you, Claudio. And you know, since last year, we talked about it a little bit, but the International um, Islamic University of Malaysia has done a lot of work, you know, supporting refugees, um, among other things, since uh, we just kind of discussed those work last year. And so I'd like to share um, a video prepared by his team discussing more about what this is all about. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. A greeting of peace and a very good morning. Uh, we are here to introduce to you the project that we did in this university, the International Islamic University, way back in 2021. This was a project that involves students uh, with two key ideas of empowering them and also making it in, as, as inclusive as possible among the student population. The whole idea was to break the silos within the university so that students can work on a platform on projects that involve the community. And the idea was to get the university and the community to work together into what we call the cum university, in other words, a combination between the community and the university working together. The students were introduced to this through a course called Usra in Action, where the students actually are told how to go about doing profiling into the universe, into the community and also working on their project to solve some of the immediate problem as far as the community is concerned. For this, the students were organized into teams and the teams are 
uh, varied uh, in terms of gender, in terms of nationalities. Incidentally, there are more than 100 nationalities in this university and also they come from different faculty or different kulia as we mentioned it. The students decide what they need to do with the community, with the community on board. <coughs> this is a new experience for the university, but this is an experience that we want the student to have so that there'll be an experiential learning at the same time, rather than only remaining in the classroom or remaining in the uh, campus as such. For this, I think the first step was to engage with local communities, with people that we actually know, with people that we are familiar with their culture and habits and values, so that the integration between the community and the university becomes a little bit easier. This was done on a group of students who came into the university across the board. Every student that takes this particular course or enrolled with this university will have to do this uh, new exercise of community engagement as it were at the various levels. We're very excited to find that the students take this like duck to water. Most of them benefited from this. And today is a kind of a sharing with you what we have done. As far as the local community is concerned, there are many projects. I think various students have embarked on their own project that they decide together with the community of what works and what is relevant to the community as such. And from that, I think we'll come in it a lot more uh, uh, what you call the experiences and the student in this in this particular context themselves become the producer of knowledge not just taking it from us but they themselves tell us what is new what is relevant and what is that they learn now from this instant now i'm going to go into the second phase which we involve different cultures people of different sort of uh, uh, the value systems maybe, and a cultural sort of dimension. And here we talk about the refugees, the Rohingyas in particular, that's already situated close by the campus and a group of students uh, led by Sister Nabila uh, will explain to you how is it now we move into the next step, being inclusive not only within our own culture, but taking different dimensions, making it more global, making it more inclusive, and making it more relevant to them, so that this integration that we talked about is not only confined within ourselves, but we begin to spread it to different cultures, hopefully to different parts of the world. So I will stop here at a moment in time. I will invite Sister Nabila to speak to you on her own experience of what happens with the Rohingyas and the uh, Myanmar population around the campus. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Greeting of peace. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and good day, I bid to everyone. My name is Nona Bila Binti Adnan, a second year law student from IIUM who is currently taking USA in Asian subject in the topic of sustainable education for refugee. In completing this subject, we have managed to conduct a community profiling, which its objective is not only to address the issue faced by the refugee community in Malaysia and come up with proper solution, but most importantly, it is aimed to train the students of IIUM with the ability to mingle around with the outside community so that the knowledge and soft skill that has been acquired in campus could be put into test. For the purpose of this project, we have conducted this community profiling among the Myanmar community from Muslim Educare in Selayak. Following few site visits and interviews that has been held between my team and the Myanmar community there, it has been analysed that the main issue faced by this Myanmar community is the poor level of social development. Focusing this issue further into the domain of education, we could see that the children who are sent to this centre are left behind due to the incompetency of the syllabus which only provides them with the general knowledge but fails to prep them to pursue the education to a higher level. Those syllabus, which only concentrated into basic calculation and general information, has also failed to inculcate the technical-based subject into their learning program. Thus, acknowledging the issue that we are facing, we believe that in empowering their social development in this Myanmar community, it is important for us to introduce them with technical workshops that will be able to polish up their soft skills and abilities on certain fields. Those techniques that will be learned are important especially in helping them to uplift their economic status into a better way. We believe even as a transit country, we could do more. They deserve to be treated well and it must start from each and every one of us. Thank you.
And on that note, thank you so much, Zulo, Rebecca, and Claudio for that insightful section on local and global community engagement. It was my pleasure being able to moderate this session and I will pass it back on to our MCs. Thank you, everyone.